Okay, apologies for not getting part two out until now. I was out of town for a week, had some other stuff going on, blah, 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 excuses. Anyways, it's done now. All right, if you haven't watched part one yet, go check it out. I'll put a link in the description. Also, if you haven't watched part one, I'm sure you can figure out what's going on here. It's not like I'm crafting up a Westworld-esque storyline or anything. Do you know where you are? I'm in a dream. You're in my dream. So we left off the last part with the cabinet pretty much built, but still just dry fit together. And what I usually like to do is get all the fabrication out of the way before I fully assemble anything. So the next step was to finish the doors and cut out some of the organizational components for the cabinets. So for this stuff, I decided to use my X-Carve CNC machine. And I wanted to see if I could design everything within their online software easel. So I decided to do three things. Cut some details into the cabinet doors, make a glassware organizer, and make a hanging rack for the stemware. What I found in this process was that this is where CNC really just works for me. Being able to quickly and precisely lay out these parts and then quickly and easily cut them was such a time saver. It's kind of the perfect in-between of 3D modeling really intricate parts, which takes me forever, or doing everything by hand with a router, which also takes a long time especially if I'm only making one of each part for a custom piece. So, to my x cart machine, good job, sir. <laughs> so once the grooves were cut into the doors, I then went to work on the door details like the walnut inlays and the door handles. I then moved on to making the base, which I wanted to keep pretty simple. And this should have been a pretty straightforward part, but uh, old Shawnee here got his measurements wrong which happens from time to time. And I made the base about five inches too wide. So a little cut and paste and we were good to go. And 
finally, the last thing I had to do before fully assembling the piece was to slightly modify the lift mechanism so that it lowered to the correct spot. The lift comes with quite a bit of adjustment room, but given the fact that I'm using it not for its intended purpose, I had to adjust it a bit more than it could, but it was a pretty simple adjustment and it turned out that it worked perfectly. So this should be the last time I have to take this thing apart. I'm gonna put some finish on it, put it together for the last time, and we should be good to go. Once I had everything assembled and I had some finish on it, I kind of took a step back and I could tell that something was missing. Perfect finishing touch, maybe, but it looks good to me. This piece would have been really easy to just keep going, keep adding things. I had considered adding some lighting within the cabinet and just going over the top with all the organizational components, but I reined myself in and I'm really happy with where it's at right now. So before we get this thing working, I have to say thank you to tvliftcabinet.com, link in the description, for sending me this lift mechanism. I really appreciate it and I hope you don't regret letting me use it for something other than a TV. Thanks to Inventables. If you want to learn more about the X-Carve or Easel, I'll put links to both of those in the description. And of course, thank you to all of you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this one. Now let's get those beauty shots going. expect this is a wood shop not a fully stocked liquor store